Superman is a 1979 action-adventure video game for the Atari 2600. My name is Larry McFeely, and I'm going to play through this very short game with a speedy delivery to get you through extra quick. Although I was only a few years old when this game was released, I was most likely four or five years old when I first played Superman, and I can remember just how amazing it felt to be in control of the DC Comics superhero. Superman was designed by John Dunn, and was one of the first single-player video games available for the Atari 2600, and one of the earliest licensed video games, released to be a tie-in to the 1978 blockbuster movie starring Christopher Reeve. The whole point of the game is to collect pieces from the exploded bridge and rebuild it while returning all the bad guys to jail as quickly as possible. You start as Superman in the sky, flying down into the phone booth to transform into Clark Kent. As you make your way into town, the bridge explodes and on the scene is Lex Luthor and five of his henchmen. They're represented by the five thin bars and one thick bar in the upper left corner of the screen. We also see Lois Lane attached to the bottom of the Daily Planet news helicopter. Clark Kent makes his way back one screen west to get back into the phone booth and turn into... Superman! You can fly around as Superman and if you notice, the sound of Superman flying gets quieter the higher you go. This was the best way at the time to represent the Doppler effect of Superman getting closer and further away. You can also use Superman's X-ray vision, or power to see onto the next screen, in each direction. This comes in handy when looking for specific items or places, like we see here with Lex Luthor being on one of the next screens. Superman flies over and picks up Lex, and it's off to jail. That annoying sound is the sound of Lex Luthor's helipack, by the way. Superman places Lex right into the jail cell, and it's off for more bad guys. Another gangster is hanging out on the same screen as a beeping kryptonite satellite. You want to avoid these because it'll make you unable to fly until you kiss Lois Lane. So another bad guy is in jail as we run right into a kryptonite satellite. And like I had mentioned before, Superman cannot fly until he kisses Lois Lane, represented by the sound of a dinging bell. Once able to fly again, we continue the search for Luther's crew while keeping an eye out for kryptonite satellites and the Daily Planet helicopter, which does get in the way from time to time. There's the Daily Planet, represented by the globe graphic out front. Another bad guy. Give Lois a quick kiss. Pick this guy up. And head back to the jail. Speeding things up slightly. Drop him in the jail and we're on our way to find another with three to go. It doesn't hurt from time to time to use your X-ray vision power of looking onto the next screen. Nothing there. Nothing there either. Let's speed this up. I went ahead and grabbed a piece of the bridge here that you're supposed to return to the beginning screen where it blew up. We'll drop it down right here and keep looking for bad guys. There's one. And I lost him. Sometimes Lois Lane and the Daily Planet helicopter can get in the way. Gotcha. And a quick drop at jail. And another. Speeding things up slightly. And one left. There he is. And we have all our bad guys in jail. Now it's off to finish the bridge. As we speed things up here. There's a piece. Now back to the bridge screen. Drop the piece off at the bridge and just one more to go. Using Superman's X-ray vision, we see that it's on the next screen. And we've got it. Once you fly near the bridge area with the final piece, it all comes together again. And it's time to make your way back to the phone booth to become, once again, Clark Kent. Once you do, you'll make your way east and across the now operational bridge. And just for the fun of it... One more kiss for Lois Lane as she bends her knee in approval. And into the Daily Planet. There you have it. That's the speedy delivery of Superman on the Atari 2600.
Now, obviously, there's other difficulty settings which can slightly change gameplay, but pretty much that's the full game in general. I loved playing this game when I was little, and I felt like I had really accomplished a large feat once I figured out just how to put the bad guys in jail. There's really no way to die, so the whole game is actually about how fast you can accomplish your goals. I think my fastest time for finishing the game is just over three minutes, but some speedrunners can finish the game in under a minute. At the time, I was also playing other Atari classic games, like Adventure, Yars Revenge, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and Pitfall. But those games are stories for another video. Thanks for watching the speedy delivery of Superman. If you liked the video, hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more. Until next time, we'll see you around the neighborhood.